Hi everyone, I'm Marlena. I'm a tarot reader, a writer, and a folklore enthusiast. And today I'm going to be talking to you all about personal myth work. I'm gonna be telling you how I found it, who's inspired my practices, and how you can take some of these things and start incorporating them into your life today. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to be answering some specific questions from Instagram. And I'm also going to be telling you about a special giveaway I'm going to be doing at the end of the week. So stay tuned. So I'm going to get into what personal myth work is, but I first want to tell you a little bit about how I was feeling around the time that I discovered it for myself. It was September of 2016, so it was the beginning of a new term at my university that I was in in London, and I was not doing well. I was feeling very homesick that year in particular. I, I just didn't really want to go back, and I loved my field. I was studying screenwriting. I love storytelling. That wasn't the problem. It was just that I didn't really have any feelings of purpose or fulfillment anywhere outside of that. And um, I felt very isolated in London. So I was very depressed and I think I spent a, a good part of a week, if not a whole week, in bed living off of like heavily sugared Weetabix and just I could not get out of bed. I had no desire to do anything. I was watching TV all day and just complete escapism. I, I don't know, there was just no, I can't, I, I don't really have the words to describe it. it. It just wasn't good. And around that time, I came across the podcast, it's Shan Vanderleek's podcast, Goddess Talk Sessions. And every day, I think, was a different um, guest on this podcast and they would come and they would talk about their book or whatever their specialty was. And I, that was the one thing that I was kind of looking forward to every night. One night in particular, there was a guest, her name is Danielle Delsky. If you follow my page, you've probably seen me um, quote her before or talk about one of her books because I really love her work. And um, this was the first time I'd heard of her. And while she was on the show, she was promoting her book, Woman Most Wild at the time. And she was talking about this one part in her book that had to do with this personal myth work exercise. So it was just one exercise in her whole book. And it just resonated with me so deeply. It was like a sudden click that went off in my head. And as a result of this, this really just short exercise, I'm sure you can still find this um, interview somewhere out on the internet. I think it's available on iTunes. This, just one exercise, it was like a brain flood of clarity and these little things that brought me joy that I hadn't really connected to in a long time. And so it, it kind of triggered this reaction where instead of having this urge to be constantly escaping my reality, I kind of started diving into my own story instead of you know, trying to live through other ones, more pe people whose stories I thought were more interesting than mine. And I guess reconnecting to the roots or the, or the seeds of what made me happy and taking those seeds and trying to figure out how I could grow more of that happiness into my life just from that one exercise. But like I said, that was just one exercise. So now we're gonna get into the broader concept of you know, myth work going back to the sense of personal mythology. And personal mythology is not something, obviously I didn't make it up. Um, it's not really a new concept, I think the first time it was you know called personal myth or personal mythology was in the early 60s um, and the book in particular that uh, kind of popularized it or kind of inspired my journey anyway is the mythic path and there's there's a longer title but the main title is the mythic path and um, it's by two psychologists and it's based on or inspired by a, a study that one of them did at Johns Hopkins University According to them, um, personal myths are described as things that inform your identity, your direction, your notion of progress, and your sense of worth. And they also kind of, they go on to call them the lens that makes sense of every situation that you're in and determines how you react to it. And I'm paraphrasing, I, I don't think I'm perfectly quoting them, but that is the gist of what they describe personal myth to be. So that's personal mythology. These are like the guiding myths, guiding beliefs that lead you in your life, whether you're aware of them or not. And that's a very important aspect of um, personal myth work is being aware of your personal myths because like with anything else in your life, awareness is everything. So myth work is the process of removing yourself from living in the framework of your old myths or sometimes, you know, stories that don't even belong to you. So these could be 
larger um, societal frameworks that have been projected onto you, or they could be the more specific expectations of you know parents, guardians, teachers, just important people in your life who have kind of projected either their story or their expectation of your story onto you and you've taken that on, whether it's conscious or not. Um, myth work is the process of becoming more aware of these things and then deciding where you wanna rewrite it and where you wanna take your own story. So you do this by becoming consciously aware of your own personal mythology and intentionally taking that awareness and creating a new one, a new, more conscious, more intentional personal mythology. One that is constructive and is going to help you and is actually serving you in your present life period, in your present life arena. Because sometimes you might have had a, a guiding personal myth in the past that was perfect for you at that age, in that situation, maybe it even kept you safe in, in certain situations. But if you're not there anymore, it could actually be something that's being destructive in your current chapter. So I think it's really important to be aware that your personal mythology, your personal myth is always constantly evolving and that's why, you know, personal myth work is, is myth work. It's not just something where like, you clarify it one day and boom, you're done, you know? So let's talk a little bit about the people who have inspired my journey and just personal mythology and personal myth work in general. So the book that I was talking about earlier, The Mythic Path, is by two psychologists, Dr. David Feinstein and Dr. Stanley Krippner. I hope I'm saying their names right. And like I said, that book was actually based off of some studies that Dr. Feinstein was involved with at Johns Hopkins University. Then of course, there's Soulcraft by Bill Plotkin and Woman Most Wild by Danielle Dulski. But of course, any of her books she's very involved in creating your own systems and in, in you being the leader in your own path and really writing your own sacred text. And then of course, probably the first, the first book that was kind of talking about mythology and psychology that I was aware of um, is Women Who Run With The Wolves by Dr. Clarissa Pinkola Estes. And that's, that's to this day probably my favorite nonfiction book. I, I read that all the time. I'm gonna go get it. I went, I went and got it. Um, but yeah, I, I got this book when I was 16, and you can kind of tell it's been, I mean, it's a hardcover book, so it's not too badly damaged, but you can tell it's been through some things. I take it with me everywhere. I don't, like, if I'm going on vacation or something, this is in my suitcase. Don't ask me why, it's just always with me, just in case. <laughs> Um, so yes, this has been a hugely influential book for me. Um, a lot of the other books I've gotten on Kindle, um, but this is one that I have hard copy of and it's definitely my favorite book in my library. <laughs> and then of course, you can't talk about mythology without mentioning Joseph Campbell. So a myriad of his books, you know, his, his work in general has inspired um, my own personal mythology journey. So why does myth work matter? The best way that I can sum it up, of course, I'm not a psychologist, um, just a writer, but in my opinion, it's that your myth is magic. And now stay with me. I'm sure this is gonna sound a little woo-woo, but stay with me for a second. If stories can change our perception and our perception informs our reality, doesn't it make sense that if we can change our stories, then we can change our reality? And of course, to most people, magic would be defined as being able to somehow change or shape your reality. So you having control over your story helps you get control over your reality. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go through some kind of key concepts in my present ongoing process. Now, obviously this is um, constantly evolving, just like your personal myth should be, and personal development should be constantly evolving. You can't, you know, it wouldn't really be that great if I just woke up at 23 years old and said, I'm done improving for the rest of my life. I have perfected it. I'm just gonna go over some of these, some of these processes that I've employed and um, these aren't necessarily the orders that you should do them in with the exception of when I specify that something should be done first. Um, because obviously every story is different, every person is different, you might need different medicine at a different time. So I'm just giving you some ideas of some things that you can use to kind of help you get started. These little things that can help you make small changes that make you feel big differences. <laughs> Okay, so I think something really important when you start, and this is something that I didn't do in the beginning. This step is key. This is something you should do first because while the thing that I did first really helped me feel a great improvement in my baseline happiness and sense of purpose, 
I feel like not doing this first also stunted my growth for a couple of years because it can really stunt your progress in your authenticity with others. Um, meaning that you might know what your truth is, but if you don't do this step, you might still be kind of harboring and hiding that truth in the corner and you don't really want to share it with anybody. You don't even want to admit it to yourself that much. It's like, this is your secret little happy box when you could be having a very loud, happy life. This process would also fit very nicely with any shadow work you're doing. Um, so this is where in, in the mythic path, it, it kind of fits along with their concept of you have a guiding myth and you have a conflicting myth. Um, sometimes you have destructive myths. So this task, this first thing that I believe that you should do, this is something I wish I had done first, um, is a word dump. Just journal all of the things, good and bad, that you believe about yourself, um, any, personal, any personal myths that you have in the present, um, or things that you've been told about yourself in the past from external sources that you believe to be true or that you've reacted on in the past. Um, be truly honest with the personal myths that you've kind of bound yourself to because these are the the personal myths that if you're not careful these are the things that leave you feeling like you're in a loop because you've told yourself you know i'm never gonna have a happy relationship and so you end up looking for relationships that aren't going to end up working out well you know so being aware getting it down on paper and saying these are things i believe to be true about my life just so you can at least have a clear starting point and knowing where you are before you try to decide where you wanna go is key. So the next step or another step, cause you know, you don't really have to do these in any specific order with the exception of the first one, is the step that I did first, which, and it really did make a big difference. Uh, and this one is kind of what um, Danielle Delsky was talking about in that Goddess Talk Sessions interview and in her book, Woman Most Wild, that has to do with your personal myth work in relation to what brought you happiness when you were a child. So um, identifying the things that brought you, reconnecting your story to your childhood and identifying the things that brought you joy and excitement and full engagement before you were told what should excite you, what you should be doing, what isn't, isn't acceptable in society, what your parents want you to become. You know, that age before you kind of have these, these expectations being lowered onto you. Doing this exercise and finding out what it was that you loved before that. So reconnecting to what brought you joy, what brought you peace, what made you feel safe, um, what made you feel inspired, what were the stories that you loved the most that made you feel happy. Um, I'm not in any way encouraging that you regress into being a child um, or that you take any of these things literally and you know because I liked fairies I'm going to dress like a fairy to work tomorrow I'm not suggesting that you do that um, but once you have these things down you might find some similar elements of these things that you can then bring into your life in smaller ways or find ways that you can incorporate the themes of these things into your daily life that can then make you happier I think a key factor of this, another key factor, would be understanding story structure, understanding character development. Obviously, I have a bit of an advantage on this one because I am a writer, I'm a trained writer, I've been writing since I was really young, um, so I'm very familiar with the concept of story structure and character development. The main reason why this would be helpful for you and your personal myth work journey is to really break that personal myth that I feel that a lot of us have that we are doomed to repeat our mistakes or we're doomed to repeat our family's mistakes or just because this is a, a chain reaction that has happened in the past with our family members that you are doomed to end the same way. It's, it's this kind of curse mentality and it's not necessary and the second you understand that stories don't work that way and that you're meant to evolve and you're meant to have highs and lows but you're, it's never a loop not the good ones anyway. And so I don't mean this to encourage you to bypass accountability, but there's a difference between accountability and just playing your mistakes in a loop in your head all day. Be accountable, acknowledge that something has not gone the way that you could have done it or the way that you should have done it. Um, and then plan on how you can do it better in the future. Just because one thing has gone wrong once does not mean they all need to go wrong again. Um, so yeah, understanding story structure and using that to really encourage yourself and understand that you're not doomed to repeat the same things over and over again.
actually going to get better. Kind of like the work in the first exercise that I was talking about, um, this next stage is kind of the elements of shadow work and addressing your conflicting myths and your destructive myths and really facing the myths that you've been telling yourself that have been holding you back, that are rooted in self-betrayal um, and just no longer serve you. Like I said earlier, even if it's something that helped you in the past and really getting to the root of your awareness of that thing. Like, are your coping mechanisms just covering the problem instead of helping it? Yes, I feel like shadow work is a very um, important part of this journey and really helps you unlock progress within yourself once you've realized these things that, and your shadow self is not necessarily the bad guy. It's just the subconscious part of yourself that has tried to figure out ways to help keep you safe and help you get ahead in life that are not conscious for you and may not be true for you anymore if they ever were true at all but having an awareness of these myths is the first step to unlocking it and getting to a better better chapter and just moving on and moving forward these next couple ones are largely inspired by my background in writing and storytelling, but I like to incorporate character crafting into my personal myth work practice. And this is really just fancy way to talk about, you know, personal development, your return to authenticity, or, you know, once you've done these exercises about the things that made you happy in childhood, or, you know, things that you used to really thrive at, or things that you used to be interested in, and figuring out ways to pull these aspects of your past self into your new present self or if you know that there's a future version of yourself that you would like to be starting to work toward developing yourself into that person so i call it character development because i'm a writer but it's just it's personal development but of course in the framework of myth work you can think of it more as kind of turning yourself into the hero of your own story and again not in a narcissistic way but just in a way that you are aware of your own power in your life and that your life is a journey and that it's meant to be constantly evolving and that challenges do not mean that you're failing they're just part of the journey so the next thing is world building which again is clearly screams writers um but the world building aspect would be uh more along i guess for most people you'd consider this you know law of attraction or manifesting for most people this would be you know the envisioning of the world that you want to live in and getting really really specific I think that's why I aligned the the word world building with it because if you just tell someone to picture the life they want a lot of people can tell you what their goals are the thing with world building is that it often takes it a step further where world building asks that you go beyond just telling us what the world is like and you dive into why the world is like that how did the world get like that so you would world build this future world and future life for yourself but you also have to work backwards and say this works like that because of this and that's the kind of thing that would then inform your character development because you know if you want to get into this world you have to do this thing otherwise they don't match that makes sense if not I can do a separate video on world building and the law of attraction connection that I've drawn together I don't know if I'm the first one to think of it I don't think so but yeah consciously creating the world that you want to be in and understanding why you want to be in that world will really help you kind of separate yourself from accidentally falling into a pitfall of like well I just I want to drive a luxury car you know like world building asks why <laughs> you know um, to make sure that you don't end up at that destination because you can succeed and you can end up with these goals and you know you got it awesome but do you feel fulfilled did you create a future that you actually feel fulfillment in or is it just a glittery more glittery version of the one you're in now and is that enough for you these are where some of the Instagram questions came in so first of all before we get to the Instagram questions dreams like I said Jungian psychology and dreams go hand in hand. They are very important. So when it comes to personal myth work, keeping a dream journal, it's always a good idea, uh, but keeping a dream journal to keep track of the symbols, triggers, or plot lines that are constantly recurring in your dreams can help inform which personal myths in your life need attention right now or where you could be moving forward and developing your myth work further. Um, 
so now for numerology I had a question on Instagram that was asking what do you do if you're seeing a number you know repeating itself constantly and now I'm not a numerologist I'm not someone who is well versed in angel numbers or anything but my advice in relation to personal myth work and numerology would be that this is something that we actually have a lot of exposure to these days you know numbers anyway because you know we are all surrounded by clocks so if we have our phone in our hand all the time you're probably someone who sees a certain time pop up a lot or you might just see numbers pop up elsewhere my tip would be to look into the meaning of the number that is constantly repeating in your life and trying to see how you can fit that into your current chapter or bring it into focus with the myth that you're dealing with at the moment or any conflicting myths that you believe are at, at odds right now. So taking that number, looking up what it means and trying to see either how it fits into the myth that you're dealing with right now or how it's actually indicating a possible conflicting myth that's present in your life. Again, I'm not an astrologer. I love astrology. I would love to learn more about astrology, but I'm not an astrologer. So I'm just going to put that disclaimer there first. Um, so the two I'd recommend off the top of my head though would be um, Teresa Reed, also known as the Tarot Lady and um, Kelly Rosano. I don't think she's doing free astrology videos anymore, but I think she's still offering them on her website. So yes, you definitely have more than one star sign in your chart. You have more than three star signs in your chart. My advice is that knowing your birth chart can help you get a full idea of the cosmically active energies in your life and in your character um, and in your psyche. So you can find free birth chart calculators online or you can book a reading with someone, you can book a full um, natal chart reading. But if you can't do that yet, there are, there are lots of calculators online that can basically give you a full breakdown of your personality. I remember the first time I did mine, I was shocked. <laughs> so what you would do with that information is you can take that and look at that against your own personal myths in your life and see where you're potentially creating those conflicting myths again, or where you can take some of those helpful aspects of your star sign and implement them into positive guiding myths in your life. And finally, the tarot. So obviously we know I love the tarot. Because the fool's journey is so closely linked with the hero's journey, I feel like these, this modality and personal myth work just, they fit very well together. And then of course, the tarot is also beyond its storytelling capacities i also see the tarot as a way to quickly and deeply connect to your subconscious and all the underlying energies and biases and it cuts past those and goes straight to the heart of the matter and sometimes that's what you need if you're finding yourself in a situation and you're not really sure what your conflicting myth is or if you're having any destructive myths the tarot will let you know no problem so yeah those would be any extra modalities you want to throw in they're not necessary but they can help I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're interested in learning more about personal myth work, you can work with me in a few ways. So of course I do the tarot with the personal myth work guidance. I have a couple of spreads that are inspired by personal myth work and can help you get started on your personal myth work journey. Or we can hop on a call. I can do a 45 minute call or a 60 minute call and we can do an introduction to myth work call for you specifically. Where we would talk about some guiding myths that are going on in your life or I could give you some exercises to help you narrow down what they are and where you can move forward and basically getting you on your journey to having more awareness about the stories that are navigating your life at the moment. I'm planning on doing a giveaway at the end of the week and I'm going to be giving away three of those sessions for free. So stay tuned on how you can get this free introduction to MythWork call. And then of course, after that call, there's no pressure. It's really just to give you an introduction to the concept and to give you the tools for you to begin your journey. I really hope you guys learned a lot from this video. If you still have any questions, just let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll be able to do a part two. I know I glossed over a lot of these things today, but I just wanted to give a really, you know, broad overview so you could understand the concept of it because I know it's something that's kind of nebulous and hard to find on Google. Like there aren't many resources to learn about it outside of, you know, buying these literal books. I've also included some book titles in the description uh, if you're interested in reading more in your own time. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sure this is gonna be a long video, but I really appreciate your time and your interest. And thank you so much for watching and have a great week, guys.